Hello, welcome. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the CEO and founder of BizHack, uh, BizHack Academy, and this is the Digital Marketing Masterclass Series uh, done in partnership with the Office of the Mayor, Daniela Levine Cava. Uh, I'm so excited to doing uh, to welcome you to the second of three masterclasses that we're doing in this inaugural partnership with Strive 305. Last week, we talked about LinkedIn. This week, we're talking about how to conduct your own digital market of your uh, marketing audit of your website and social media. And next week at this time, we're going to be talking about how to make Instagram pop. Uh, this series um, is in partnership with the Office of the Mayor of Miami-Dade County, Daniela Levine Cava, and it's part of her incredibly important new initiative called Strive 305. And BizHack is so proud to be one of the founding partners of Strive 305. We're the first of what will be many partners uh, in this incredibly important small business support initiative. And we're very excited to welcome Danilo Vargas, who is leading this initiative, this effort for the office of the mayor and is going to say a few words. Welcome, Danilo. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, it is a true pleasure for me to be here with you all today. It's so great to see so many people uh, on the call and that are still arriving. That's fantastic. I am really happy and, and heartened to see the, um, you know, that folks are enjoying this class and really taking it to heart. And I want to talk about real quickly about the mindset of, of, of attending this class. And I want to just ask you a question. What will you do to commit to making this class transformational for your small business. This class and the one that we're gonna be holding next Wednesday, what can we do to commit to making it transformational for our small businesses, uh, each of one of you? Because the mayor is committed to making sure that everyone in Miami-Dade County who is the small business owner has the opportunity to thrive in the post-pandemic recovery and economy. And so that's what Strive 305 is all about. That's what this great partnership with this amazing organization, BizHack, we're so excited to be partnering with them because they offer world-class insights and information and education that you can really use to level up your marketing. So we're just thrilled. We are all in this together. You have the support that you need from my our office, the mayor's office, uh, from the BizHack team. And I'm here all class long to really learn some things myself, Dan. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be fantastic. Ricardo, Lilia, great to see you. Thank you for all you guys do. Thank you. I wanted to take a second and uh, welcome you. Uh, my name is Dan Gretsch, the CEO, and I'm the uh, founder of BizHack Academy and the creator of the lead building system. And what I am more than anything else is a business storyteller. I spent 20 years as a journalist and then the last 10 years uh, working in business and with small businesses to head their marketing, head their digital marketing and help them grow. I'm a proud graduate of the Goldman Sachs 10 KSB program, uh, which Ricardo Barris, uh, today's presenter, is a fellow alumnus of. Uh, it's an incredible program, free, um, sponsored by Goldman Sachs, uh, organized by Miami Dade College uh, to help you take your business to the next level. It's specifically designed for businesses three years or longer, 150K or more. Uh, and to learn more, just Google Goldman Sachs 10 KSB and Miami Dade College, and you'll see more about the program, of which Ricardo and I are both graduates. Uh, I went to Princeton as an undergrad, got my master's at FIU, go Panthers, uh, and got did a Fulbright in Argentina. Um, BizHack has been uh, a really big part of the entrepreneurial ecosystem, and this latest partnership with the Office of the Mayor is really just the latest in, in many years of work that we have done uh, working with small business support organizations uh, like the SBDC, Miami Bayside Foundation, Florida State Minority Supplier Development Council, m many of the big universities, Broward, FIU, Miami Dade College, we're very proud of the track record we have working with microenterprises and small businesses. And we see this masterclass series as really a continuation of that effort. Now, a lot of you are gonna be wondering, do I get a copy of the recording? Is there a handout? Uh, never fear. Uh, you're going to be get, getting, as a thank you for coming today, uh, a handout that we've prepared with the key takeaways from today's talk. You'll get a link to a recording so that you can watch it or share it with others. You will be automatically registered for next week's Instagram Masterclass. Uh, we will also be sharing with you in that email information about our scholarship program 
for minority and women-owned businesses. And if you do decide you want to move forward with an application, uh, we will give you a free marketing consultation and an invitation to attend a free class of $500 value. So those are our thank you gifts for coming today. Uh, and without further ado, we're going to talk now about how to conduct your own digital marketing audit with BizHack Masterclass instructor Ricardo Barris. He's the founder and CEO of Me Group. Um, and I wanted to just do a quick introduction of Ricardo before we uh, have him uh, continue. Ricardo is really an extraordinary talent. Uh, he is a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he is the founder and CEO of a digital marketing agency and technology firm called Me Group, MI Group. Um, he is uh, also the, the founder uh, and CEO of Purposely, which is a e-commerce platform for purpose-driven brands. He has nearly two decades of entrepreneurship experience growing and selling companies. His first company was an education company tutoring children in math and English. He also is a recording artist. Um, and at all of our graduations, this is a little bit of a secret, but at all of our graduations, we feature a song that he wrote specifically for BizHack. Um, and it is, uh, more, most importantly, Ricardo is a, a dear friend and colleague and we're very thrilled to have you here today. Welcome, Ricardo. Thank you, Dan, and thank you for the invitation. Um, thank you to the office of, of the mayor, uh, Daniela uh, Levin Kawa, and um, of course, uh, Strive, Strive Miami. <clears throat> I appreciate uh, this opportunity to share with, uh, with you some of the knowledge that I have and have acquired over the uh, the last um, few years and more specifically with digital marketing. Um, and we're going to go right into it. Uh, this is a topic that I, I feel um, all of you uh, should at least have some takeaway from here, uh, which is really going to help you to leverage uh, your opportunity when it comes to doing your own digital marketing or understanding what's necessary to, uh, to facilitate uh, your 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 digital marketing efforts, and so we we have a poll, and I want to I want to throw the poll up first, just to kind of get a, a feedback uh, from everyone, uh, just kind of uh, what what exactly uh, you are in terms of your position. So, Lily, if you if you don't mind uh, bringing that that poll up uh, uh, for us, recording. 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 So the poll should have come up. It says, have you, or anyone, uh, uh, have you or anyone ever conducted a digital marketing audit of your business? How often do you conduct digital audits? And which of the following audits are you familiar with? And uh, well, uh, Lilia, how, how, what kind of percentage response do we have so far? We have 28, 30, 32%, 35. Keep on All right, we're going to give it another few seconds, guys, please. Awesome. Um, look, look for the poll and give us your response. This is going to really help us tailor today's uh, training to your specific needs. How are we doing? Okay, we reached 54%, 55. All right. So, Ricardo, yes. uh, you can go ahead. We'll, we'll keep the poll open for another 30 seconds, and then we'll share the results. Nice. So um, so, so that's, that's important that we kind of understand where you are uh, when it comes to your own on your own understanding of uh, of digital marketing um th dan do you want us to do you want to share that slide for me let me just run over it real real quick in terms of what we're going to be covering uh before i bring my screen up here um to share with you some of the tricks that uh we have in our books to help you to make your own digital marketing um assessment Sure. So what I'm going to do, uh, Lilia, do you want to go ahead and, and uh, close the poll and share the results while I get my screen back up? So uh, the audit says that 77% of the people, uh, three quarters, have never done a digital audit of themselves, which is uh, phenomenal. Uh, you guys are in the right place. Um, that Those of you uh, who, who, who do uh, do it, uh, do it annually. 
uh, and um, the audits that you're most familiar with uh, are an SEO audit, um, then uh, an email audit, uh, social media data analytics content, and what the hell is MarTech? Uh, MarTech, by the way, is marketing technology. An audit of your MarTech means are the technologies you're using the best, the cheapest? Are they being used effectively? Are there things you're paying for you're not using? That's what a MarTech audit means. And uh, I'd love to know if you could put in the chat who that one person is. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to leave because you don't need this. Uh, but for everybody else, you're, you're more than welcome to stay. Uh, I'm just kidding. But I am curious who that one person is uh, who, who answered uh, yes to MarTech audit. Bravo to you. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen now. Um, this is going to be kind of a summary uh, uh, of um, what we're we're going to cover, um, and then I'm going to hand it over to Ricardo. This is a extremely interactive session, um, so the the learning objectives here are how to conduct your own digital marketing audit through the use of practical examples and live demonstration, understanding how to use free tools and techniques to evaluate your website performance SEO competitors content and social media, knowing what questions to ask your service providers if they're not doing audits, if they are doing audits for you, and frankly, giving them to, uh, a guideline of what audits they should do if they're not, and then paving the way ultimately to a really great digital presence uh, and a di functioning digital marketing strategy and roadmap. Now, he's going to go through a series of recommended tools and we're gonna do our best in the next 40 or so minutes to go through all of these tools and he's not going to do it with a presentation. He's going to do it in real time, uh, sharing his screen as he does real time audits. So you're going to get a handout with a list of these tools. But I just want to give you a quick high level tour of what we're going to be talking about. And then just sit back, relax, enjoy the demo, and you'll get a handout with a list of all these and the websites. First, we're going to talk about Wappalizer. Then we're going to talk about Think with Google. Then we're gonna talk about GT metrics. Then we're gonna talk about HubSpot website grader. Then we're gonna talk about Google mobility speed test, Hotjar, Google analytics, and we're gonna wrap up with mention. Now, there are lots of other tools that you can use that are also really effective. And those are not gonna be covered in the presentation, but they will be listed on the handout for you to play with on your own time. With that, Back to you, Ricardo. Thank you, thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. And you know, why do a why do an audit anyways, right? That's a that's usually a question that uh, most people ask. What's the purpose? Uh, why do I need to even worry about about that? The truth is, folks, that you've got an online presence, or you have an interest in building an online presence, and it's always good to know where you are in order to craft strategy to figure out where you're going, right? Um, and so you want to set yourself up for success. That's important. You want to get out of the dark about your marketing. The worst place that you can be is in the dark when it comes to your marketing. And you want to know what's going on. And to do that, you really have to ask key questions. You really have to understand, hey, you want to be able to check certain things out for yourself. Or um, even if you have a, a, a marketing team or, or, or an agency working for you or with you, you want to ask the appropriate questions. The, the audit is going to help you to find answers to performance question, right? Footprint is essential in today's digital age. And you want to have as much of that as possible. As we see, everything has been digitized. E-commerce is trending up like never before. And so it's only going to be folks who find you that will be able to, you know, to, to provide um, the sort of return that you're looking for. So finding the answers to those are important. And then I like the idea of discovering opportunities to optimize these efforts, right? We're doing some things. I usually like to say with my team, here's the thing, as we refresh our strategy, some things that are, some things will work and there are other things will not work. If it's working, we amplify it. And if it's not working, we modify it. And that's kind of like our approach. So we're always in this, this modality, if you may, we're constantly looking for opportunities to modify and amplify um, things. And the final piece I'll say before I bring my screen up to is that you want to pave the way for a functional roadmap. Um, you know, just, just living in Miami, almost everywhere that I want to go, I've got to hit the GPS 
because the GPS has got to tell me where I'm supposed to be heading and the, 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 the turns that I need to be making. Um, your, your digital journey is pretty much the same thing, right? You need to understand where you're headed and you need, you need a roadmap to, 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 to get you there. The, the audit really helps you to kind of figure that out, sort of functional roadmap to be able to say, okay, this is where we need to go. Um, I want to start with the marketing technology audit. And so MarTech is new to a lot of folks. And um, we feel like it's, it's something that you're going to hear a lot more about. Uh, a, a MarTech audit is essentially using a specific tool that we're starting with Wapilizer, using Wapilizer to allow us to then figure out, first of all, we want to understand what are the marketing technology stack. Uh, stack is a new term for a lot of digital marketers as well. And if, you're, if you've never heard of that before, it's really just technology that we stack on top of each other to get what we want. Uh, from our digital marketing goals and objective. Um, it's hard sometimes to tell what sort of stack you need. And so what we usually do is to look at what's out there by benchmarking. So we can bring up uh, a competitor site. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, let me know if you're uh, seeing my screen, Dan. I just want to make sure that uh, everyone is seeing it. Um, <clears throat> and so, so, so we want to be able to do uh, sort of a MarTech stack and just kind of understand, hey, What's the tool my competitors are using uh, that I should perhaps be be using or I should know about? So it's a little way of spying on you know on others, but it's also understanding your own um, uh, position as as it relates to your performance. And we're going to do this more specifically with your website. Um, so I would like to ask you if anyone would like to volunteer your website that we can go ahead and do a little Martech uh, a little Martech audit. Um, if you put it in the chat, we'll go right ahead and we'll start that and then we can kind of chit chat around that. Okay, so I see a couple of sites in here. I, I saw one first. Ooh, 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 wait a minute. Let me just do the first one that I came up, the Miami group. So I'm going to put the Miami group in my, in my browser here and I want to just hit enter. Now I'm just browsing the site, just, just looking, right? But that's really not why I'm here. I'm coming here because what I want to do is to use the Wapilizer tool. Now, Wapilizer is a add-on, right? W-A-P-P-A-L-Y-Z-E-R. It's a add-on that you can install in your Google Chrome browser that tells you what technology is actually uh, used to build a site. Now, as a marketer, there are certain things that I'm looking for. And you see right here on my screen, um, don't mind the, the, the thousands of tabs you see, you see me open in here. Uh, it's kind of my secret way is ways of navigating my own world. So don't try it at home if you haven't practiced. But here, here is uh, the Wapilizer icon. And I can look here and I'm, I'm seeing a list of technologies that this particular website is built on. So as a marketer, I'm looking at this and I'm asking for a couple of things. Well, first of all, I want to kind of understand one, <clears throat> I see that there's email marketing uh, that's embedded into this site. So you notice there's constant contact here that's embedded in this site and constant contact is essentially saying, hey, on somewhere on your site, you're collecting data, you're pushing that information into constant contact and that's great. Why do you need that as, as in your own website? Well, you need to be able to give every visitor an opportunity to stay connected with your brand. And so having an email marketing software integrated into your website it is a major opportunity for somebody to have at least the option to say, I want to stay in touch with this brand. I want to stay in touch with this company and I want to be able to, uh, to, to, to connect with them. So, so, we, so we see that. We're also seeing some other things here, like there's some marketing automation also with constant contact. And it's telling us that, hey, this website has got a marketing automation into it. Whereas if, if, if an email is submitted or something is submitted via email to, to the site, you're probably going to get an instant email coming back to your inbox. Um, it's probably going to be a, a, a workflow or we call a series of email that is triggered based on the first uh, um, uh, email that you would have submitted through the website. So we see that, that there is a, there's an opportunity, there's a possibility that you may actually have um, the constant contact marketing automation set up there. That's great. We see also the website's got a blog, right? Which is not bad. It's built on Wix and we see that, right? We see that the site is, is, is built on Wix and we see that it's got a blog. 
um, and, and this is great. It's limited, however, because there are some other things that we're actually looking for. Um, and we're looking for things like analytics. Who is responsible for tracking the data that's actually coming into this site? How are we tracking the, how are we tracking the traffic? How are we tracking the, 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 the behavior of the users? So these are some things that we'd look for. Um, as a marketer, I know that I'm not seeing here, for example, any pixel, any pixel that's on the site. I'm not seeing any pixel that's on the site. Um, so the idea, the idea is that we can ideally figure out immediately that, oh, we probably need to install Pixel to be able to track certain things up on the site. Um, so that's key because you want to make, you want to ensure that you have those things going on. Now I can pull up another site because of the limited stack that I'm seeing here. I'm probably just going to go ahead and pull up another site to see if I see something in here. But what I would do if I was the Miami group, I would look at who are my closest competition? And if I can pull this up using Wapalizer and I can look to see what is it that they have on their site that we don't necessarily have in terms of technology and why do they have that versus why do we have it? Uh, why we don't have it. And then you can kind of explore um, adding those tools again to help you to build that functional roadmap. So here is the other site. And we notice that this site has got 18 technologies that are on, it, on, that are on the site. And we're going to kind of look through here. So we see here drastically a, a very different set of tools that's on this site versus the one we just looked at. For example, we see that there is a Facebook pixel here that I was talking about just now. We also see that there's Google Analytics here. We see that there's Tag Manager here. So the, the thing is that you need to be able to have these on your site at the bare minimum, have Google Analytics. Why? And as you hear me, you're going to hear me talk about Google Analytics a little bit. Google Analytics helps you to track and monitor your traffic. It's important to understand who is coming in on your site, where are they coming from? And if you don't have Google Analytics on your site, you're missing out. And this is how we can tell that you don't. So if you pull your own site up and say, well, let me find out if my marketing guy did put Google Analytics on my site or my web guy, this is what you will do. Use Wapalizer to tell you, then you can pick the phone up and say, hey, you know, I don't see Google Analytics on the site. Is it really tracking? Is it, is it really pulling any information? That's how you get a fix. Now you see, we have also Tag Manager. And Google Tag Manager is, is also a part of the Google family of, uh, of, of tools that you can use to then facilitate your tracking if you have multiple tags or multiple um, pixel tools that you wanna use Google Tag Manager to help you to track. If you don't understand how this is done, what we're saying as marketers, hey, talk to your marketing folks, talk to the folks who are handling this for you and ask them about this because this is key. These are, these are important uh, tools that Google are using to help you to do better with your online presence. We see some other things and we see the pixel. And as you know, the Facebook pixel is key if you're, if you're interacting with Facebook a lot um, and you wanna be able to track that data um, out, in the, uh, out in, the face, in the Facebook as well. We also see, of course, there's marketing automation. We spoke about that before. The website is using uh, WordPress. This is, this is something I really love Wapilize because it tells you pretty much everything you need to know, both as a marketer and as a developer, right? We also see here that there's MailChimp. So before you saw constant contact, now you see MailChimp coming up in here as one of the, um, the other tools. Notice what you never saw on the other site was the retargeting, which is a Google remarketing tag. And that never showed up on the other side. So you may, you may wanna actually think about having this on your own side as well, because what the remarketing tag does is really help you to retarget and market to visitors who came to your site before. And so between the Google analytics, between the Google tag manager and, and the Google remarketing tag, those tools are powerful tools that's actually gonna help you to, uh, to, to manage your traffic, right? <clears throat> so that's really uh, the first tool that I want you to go ahead and, and try it yourself. Install the tool, wapelizer.com, install the add-on on your browser, load your website, load your competitor's website, load anybody's site, and it, they will be able to provide you with the tools that this site actually has. And the MarTech tools are the ones that you just saw me um, mention it. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty interesting, right? Um, we can just do one more in the interest of time just to see if we see anything that's different. What you see me doing though is I'm looking at these different sites and I'm identifying things that I have not seen on the previous sites. 
which is telling me that, okay, if you start documenting all these tools, you will then realize that, hey, there are some tools that are really good uh, for, for, for one set of purposes, email or marketing automation. Some are good for retargeting. And you can literally click on the tool, by the way, right? And you can actually see the, 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 the software or the application. Let's take a look at this one. So just like I said, here's something on this site that was not on the previous sites. Yoast SEO, which is very good for search engine optimization. This site is using WordPress. So if you have a WordPress site and you don't have Yoast installed or set up, you may have another SEO plugin. But Yoast is by far a very popular plugin that allows for you to optimize every single pages of your website. That's actually submitted by uh, submitted to Google. Google. Google needs to crawl your website. So let me pause for a minute and let me just advise you. If Google is not crawling your website yet, you need to get on that today. You need to get with your webmaster, get Google console, and you need to get that what's called that crawler, uh, which is that verification by Google, submit to Google your site map, right? And allow Google to crawl your site. Google crawls your site almost every 24 hours. And the more information you share on your site, like blogs, we saw blogs on the other site. We didn't see necessarily see blogs showing up here, but the more information you share there, the more Google then takes that data provided to people who are searching for you, remember. So go ahead and do that today. If there's one thing that you haven't taken away from this, you, you wanna take that away. So we see some other things here. We saw the Facebook already. What we saw that wasn't on there too was, there's a Google AdSense. So we see that this site, is using their free space, their real estate space, and they're selling it back to Google and they're making money. So this site may be making some money from, you see the ads running up on the sides here and that's what the tool does. So this is what I love about the, the tool. Now I see they have marketing automation for AWeber. If you ever wanna know what AWeber is, you just click on AWeber. What Wapilizer will do is to tell you, look at what Wapilizer does, it tells you how many people are using this AWeber application? It tells you what this AWeber application is. You can literally go check it out yourself, do your own research. Is it a good thing for me? Maybe I should have a tool like that as well. And you can go ahead and install that. That's that's beautiful, right? So you I, know, think I, love, I love this tip because remember how we were talking about MarTech and none of us really knew what the heck that was? Mm -hmm. This is your MarTech stack. What Wappalizer is giving is the MarTech stack, stack of your competitors. Exactly. So um, just wanted to do a quick time check because I don't want you to run out of time because we've got a bunch of other tools. But Wapalizer is the starting point for every digital audit. Great stuff, Ricardo. Absolutely. So, so we're, we're going to, so, so you want to do some fixing up on this. Um, and of course, we can't look at all your sites, uh, but please do the exercise yourself. Make a note of what you're seeing. Um, one of the questions that we usually get is like, what are, what are we supposed to look for in a standard? What are the standard tools that we must have on your site. Well, you wanna have marketing automation. So you wanna have triggers. You wanna allow people to sign up for information on your site and you wanna be able to have those triggers in place to nurture them through your email marketing. So you, you gotta have email on there, email marketing, marketing automation. You've gotta have social media on there, your Facebook pixel, your LinkedIn pixel, all these social media platforms have a pixel. I'm not sure if you knew that, but you can actually go to your browser in Google Chrome and you can search the Chrome market for the add-on market for Pixel. You can find Pixel for LinkedIn, for Facebook, for Twitter, for, for TikTok, any one of those that you do um, business with or you actually interact with, you can find Pixels to track your data here. So you wanna look for that. Google Analytics, this site doesn't have Google Analytics on there, but you wanna also look for that. How are we being tracked? And you wanna have that in place. Um, Dan, if you can help me with the next tool, I think it's uh, Think with Google, which is where I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go next, and I love I love what Google did here, where they created a, a space to allow you to have. Um, I'm going to go back to the U.S. I'm actually in South America right now, but I'm going to go back to the U.S. so I can have the U.S. data here. Um, but what's interesting about Think Think with Google is that you get insights from Google. Who is the best person to gain insight from than some of the biggest guys on the web today? And that's what Google actually does. Google will allow for you to just share your website with them. 
once you share your website with them, it will be able to tell you, give you specific insights. So as you see here, there are several different, several different um, areas that you can find information from as it relates to uh, to to insights from from Google. So here are some of the tools that I want you to look at when you go to think with uh, think with Google. And we're going to run a test on one of these uh, on one of these um, tools. You've got tools to test your site, right? You've got tools to find a market finder. You've got tools to grow, grow your store. So does anybody uh, on the call, do you have an e-commerce store? We can also just kind of try, for example, if you've got an e-commerce shop, we can just put that URL in here. What Google is gonna do is going to allow, uh, an, almost do an audit for you, right? Um, and if we can use one of these sites, uh, maybe we can see uh, what it will come back with and they'll probably send you a, um, they, they're going to send you a report. If you have a, just put your site in the chat. If you have an e-commerce site, if you sell something online, um, go, go ahead, put your, put your stuff on, on here. Let me go and let me see five ocean. So let me take five ocean because that was the first one that came up. I'm going to put five ocean in here and I'm going to see what Google is going to tell me about five ocean. So I'm going to hit get started and Google is going to be running a scan on the five ocean and it's gonna provide a report. Now, everybody needs to do this. Why? So Google, if Google is not your friend, make Google your friend today because Google is, is got some of the, the largest assets online. They're pretty giant uh, business as you know, and you wanna be in their, uh, in their space. So here, the first thing is Google wants to do, tell us about your business. So, well, your business sells online or it sells on um, um, both online and in store. So we're going to go with just this one uh, for now, just to see. And you can go back and redo the report if I'm missing anything here. Um, what's the, uh, the, 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 what is the, uh, for example, the industry that, that, the, uh, that you're in at, um, at um, Ocean, uh, if you can just tell me that. I want this to be interactive and I can only interact with you in the chat. So if you tell me your industry real quick, this will be, this will be helpful. This is the person who put... Um, uh, is Adrian? Uh, what's your what's your industry? Marine accessories. So it's probably going to be other here, um, and then we'll probably just put here in 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 here. That's going to be marine, and uh, we're going to go to next. So what Google is doing is collecting some data, um, and they say, hey, are you on an e-commerce platform? So Adrian, what which one of these e-commerce platform are you on? WooCommerce? Are you on Shopify? Which one are you on? If you can tell us real quick. And so he says, oh, well, we're on Shopify. We select Shopify and we go to the next. So Google says, well, wait, we're going to be reviewing your site and your report's going to be ready in just a moment, right? And so Google is saying, well, while we're building, here's a sneak peek of what you can actually do. And so this is beautiful because Google is also giving you industry trends to say, hey, you know, the average score across all industry retailer is 54% when it comes to how uh, your business is faring as it relates to uh, as it relates to your presence online. That's 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 fantastic because you need that information to then work on optimizing yours, right? They're sharing other things. Say, hey, based on your business, this is why you have to tell Google what it needs to know for it to come back with information. It says based on your business. There's a 37% of your shoppers think that having their shipping and billing info remembered and filled in automatically, that would make their shopping experience with a retail a lot easier. So if you, if you don't have that on your site, you want to start looking at, hey, how can I actually do this? Because this number is not going to go down. It's going to go up. More people are going to want to just have their shipping information pre-filled. The experience wants to be really, really super easy. Based on your industry, again, they're saying that, hey, 53% think that receiving promotional deals based on past purchases is going to make their shopping experience better. Why not looking into that, right? You're also seeing here where Google is saying 73% of shoppers really now wants shipping to happen in two days or less. Where are you when it comes to where it comes to that? How can you actually improve, right? There's a 37% that's actually thinking that, hey, if the billing info is remembered, we just looked at that, that experience is going to be better. And so Google, as they're actually working on this report, right, when the report is finished, you can send the report to your email, you can review it with your team. And I think that's beautiful. And it's totally free, right? You can start having this conversation and say, hey, we need to do better. We need to improve these and these things. 
And I think that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. So you can get your full report. You put your information in here, right? And you put your information in here. You can send, uh, you send that information to, to Google. So I'm gonna just put your information in here real quick. Um, and uh, just say it's five ocean. And maybe if you wanna um, share your, uh, your email, then maybe I can actually just send it, send it over to you. But the report's gonna have some of the same things that um, that you saw us looking at just now. This is beautiful, guys, because if you you can put one in the chat or you can just put uh, just yeah, put one in the chat. If you've never heard of these tools, you can go ahead and put one in the chat because I think this is this is pretty much magical uh, for you to have this. So we create create your profile with Google. Um, I'm not going to do that, but what I'll ask you to do, uh, Adrian, is why don't you go to grow to 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 think with Google right and then you do the same thing that i just did here um and you can get your own uh, profile and you can get your own report everybody can actually do that uh and i think that would be uh that would be super uh super helpful so i want to go to the other uh tool in the interest of uh time and um i don't know if there's any question feel free to uh, to throw them in as we're going through this uh, this is a walkthrough so I'm showing you stuff uh, so that you can take away and apply immediately um, as you um, as you as you go through this, right? So my next um, tool is GT Metrics. So GT Metrics, um, let me just type GT Metrics in here so you see what's going on. GT Metrics is the other tool that I want you to have in your arsenal. And what GT Metrics is going to to be doing? Uh, let me just make sure I have it spelled right here. GT Metrics. What, what GT Metrics is going to do is to give you uh, um, some feedback on your performance as, as you have your website. So we're going to, let me just try to find one on the side up here, and I'm just going to pull up the retractable awning. So I'm just, just go put up the retractable awning, and I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to test this site and see what kind of score uh, do I get from for, for, for this particular URL. And what GT Metrics is actually doing, it's, it's analyzing your entire domain. It's looking at all your pages. It's comparing it with other pages, and it's it's going to give you a report. And uh, it's almost like back in school again. You're going to get an A or a B or a C, and then you're going to have to go to your team, and you're going to have to talk about how can we get an A because we're oh, and congratulations to uh, to this person because you have a B. That's not a bad score to take home, right? But there's opportunity to then move from a B to an A, um, and so this is saying that hey. Your page, your performance is 90%. You've got well, good structure, like your, your, you, you have at least a, a 1.4 in terms of just how your content loads. And you see how the GT metrics is breaking down these things for you. It's telling you which, which part of your page is taking different times. Look at the onload time here, 2.2 seconds. Look at the time to interact. Look at the fully loaded time, just right across uh your uh your page here right that's amazing um these tools are available for you to use and this is this is totally free like you do this right now um so here you've got the performance metrics that gt is telling you hey here's your speed index this is what uh this is what's happening and and if you have no idea what gt ventures is talking about you click on this uh, uh help content here and it will tell you it's it will tell you exactly what you need to know and you can go and you can learn more about that taking those initiatives will put you in a better position again we talk about getting out of the dark with your marketing right because people are not just going to be able to just tell you things anymore like you can do it yourself and you hear terms you can go figure that out and see exactly what's going on here i love gt metrics because it helps um it gives you get structure here you can see the structure of each of your page and what to actually do about them this is going to be beautiful for your web developer to be able to, to look at. Look at this. This is every all the different um, um, assets or stuff you have, the, the, the images, the scripts, etc. And it's telling you how they are being loaded, the time in seconds each of these are being loaded. So when I go through this and I see a big thing like this that jumps out at me, I'm looking immediately. I say, what's going on here? Why is this particular uh, piece uh, taking so much time to load? How can we compress it? How can we reduce the size? But these guys here, you guys are doing very good because you have a B in, in terms of how your stuff are, are being loaded. 
let's grab somebody else and see uh, exactly if we get the same thing. So I'm seeing a rustic county soap. Let's see what uh, what um, is happening here. Now, the, the thing I love about uh, uh, GT metrics is I could I could literally just compare um, another site right at the same time. So you see right here on my left, a, I can go ahead and compare uh, with with maybe a competitor. I'm not rustic. I'm not sure you guys you guys don't compete, but I'm just showing you how you could take two sites and you can make a comparison and start looking. So the, the system is analyzing this URL. Um, and as soon as it's done, you're going to see that score on there. Um, and you'll need to know what you need to work on, right? That's beautiful uh, today. Folks, we never had these kinds of technology 10 years ago. You were, a lot of us were was in the dark. We were in the dark all the decades and decades um, in, in back in time. Today, you don't have to be, right? So, so the, here it provides a, a, uh, a report. So here you've got this, this one has got a, a, an A+. Plus. This one has got a B. So you now look at it and it's like, wow, this side here got, got an A+. Plus, and you can then compare one after the other. And this would be what I would do for my competition. And you don't have to go outside of your vertical. If you want to do that for cross-learning, you could do so. But you could just pull up your competition and kind of assess and go in and see what exactly your competition is doing to get an A why you actually uh, why while you're actually having a B, so so that's the that's that tool there. Uh, I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys, but <laughs> we always don't have enough time, and I want to make sure I um, I cover as many of them uh, as possible uh, for you. Um, somebody says it's like Carfax <laughs> for for website, and you're absolutely right. Um, it showed me the Carfax, and it's it's exactly like like that. So we're going to go to another tool that I like to use as well. Um, the, the, the other tool is HubSpot Website Grader. And what I like about HubSpot Website Grader, it does the same thing as well. It gives you a grade um, on, your, um, on, your, on your website. And the information here is slightly different in terms of the way it's communicated. Uh, and so sometimes some people prefer to have um, you know, some people prefer to have website greater uh, over, for example, the GT metrics. Uh, some I like to use both because there's so much to learn on both of the um, on both of the the, the options. So I'm going to go with um, Five Ocean because I know I, I I think you provided your your email address so you, where you can actually get this uh, where you can actually get this report. I'm going to go here and provide that. Uh, so let me just put your email here real quick so that I can um, I can send that over to you. Uh, here we go. All right. So you should get a copy of this. But uh, so so what HubSpot, this is a tool that was created using Google Lighthouse technology. And HubSpot basically just branded it their way um, and brought it out front. Uh, and this is essentially a, a sort of a lead magnet for HubSpot. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you saw that already as um, as marketers, this is a lead magnet for HubSpot just to kind of get you in the door, um, of course, and then, you know, you'll be able to then get on to, to using HubSpot, right? Um, so so this, is the, this is the grade for, for your website. Five Ocean is saying, well, your website is okay, and we can now look at the details. You see the summary here, they tell you 66 out of 100, your performance, uh, your SEO is great, you get a 30 out of 30 for that. Your mobile, you know, you get, you know, you get a good score, but there might be things to work on your security. So it's speaking to some relevant issues that you want, you want to take a look at. So you can see the details here that HubSpot is just speaking about in terms of, hey, your page request. And it's saying that, hey, that's a lot of requests that you're actually getting. And, and that's kind of like, okay, we got to go in here and we got to actually look to see how can we fix this so you got to talk to your web developer because the more HTTP requests you set, you have like like Hubspot is saying, it's, it's, it, it makes your site slower. So you really need to figure out how we can reduce uh, the number of requests that you're getting. Right, your page is 14 seconds. Hubspot saying, hey, you need at least 5.3 seconds. Um, anything that's slower is gonna people are just gonna leave the site because you know we're living in a more impatient world. Nobody wants to spend more than five 
five seconds, eight seconds to do anything these days. So you want to work on that. They've got some images out of place and some 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 JavaScript situation. But congratulations, you do have a SEO that's perfect. You've got a thirty out of thirty SEO, and you look at these folks. Look at these areas that um, that that HubSpot is saying that hey, permission to index, which is what I just talked to you about today. Today, make it a point of your duty. Write it down. I need to go and allow Google to crawl my site, give Google permission to index my site. And so this is perfect for you. Um, the meta description is another thing, describing your pages, providing titles and descriptions. That's going to really help you to get this 30, 30 out of score, 30, 30 score. You got content plugin, good job. And just ensuring that um, you've got plugins that can, can allow your, your search engine to understand your content. And you've got link, descriptive link text. So you have something going for you. Keep going at it. And so here is your mobile. You may want to check this out. You're, you've got legible font size, responsive. All those things are cool. But then saying, hey, where do I click? Because there's kind of like no call to action situation that's not loud enough on your mobile page. And that's what people want to be able to see. I, from my experience, there are two things I want you to part with today. One is people like to be told what to do, especially customers. You tell the customers, click here. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to click here. You tell the customers, buy now. They're going to click that button. So you want to make sure that on your site, you are telling your customers what to do because they, they love for you to tell them what to do. People like that. The other takeaway that I need you to, to have is if you, give every, if you give your customers all the time in the world to make a decision, guess what they're going to do? They're going to take all the time in the world to do it. So you need to ensure that when you're building your site, when you're improving your, your presence, add urgency, make sure you put limitations, dates, make sure you allow people to take decision within a certain window, because that's the only way you're going to get people to move. So you say, well, Mr. Ricardo, nobody's coming to my site. People are coming. Nobody's buying. Maybe you need to put them in urgency. Maybe they think they have all the time in the world so they can come back um, and shop with you later. And then they're busy. Something else happens. Nothing, nothing, nothing gets done where you're concerned. You make no sale, right? So you want to make sure that you can fix that. So check, check it out. I think it's, it's really going to be helpful uh, for you. Talk to your web developer, talk to your marketer, see how you can improve this. The other piece that I want to look at real quick, um, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get through all of it, but um, this is great, guys. And I think we're going to go back to think with Google again to check the, um, the, the speed. So, of mobile yeah, tech. so there's an equivalent product that, th that Google offers, which is he's showing you. It's called Test My Site. Um, and it basically does a similar version to the HubSpot version. Um, yes. And I just want to make sure that we move past this one because I do want to hit all the others. Um, we have about five yeah. minutes. So let me jump past that. And uh, I hot want to jar talk is about... next. Hot, hot, hot jar is okay. next. And then Google yeah, Analytics talk... and mention. Yeah, I want to talk about hot jar because hot jar is a behavioral uh, analytics uh, tool. And, and hot jar, what I like about hot jar, it's almost like a surveillance camera on your website. Uh, it watches people's behavior. Where do people click? Where do people go? Um, and we find that this is a beautiful product for product managers, for product designers, for researchers. Um, and if you have Hotjar on your site, again, there's one way to tell. Use Wapilizer to tell, and you'll see Hotjar listed there. Um, Google Analytics does some of this, but Hotjar has got things like heat maps, right, where it will tell you how many people that's coming to your site are, are specifically focusing in this area of your website? Where do people scroll first? What do they actually do? And that's one of the things I love about uh, um, uh, Hotjar because as you see here, Hotjar allows for you to then be able to see here the heat map of where people are clicking, where people are moving their mouse, where people are spending most of their time on your web page. So you can move things around, right? Uh, we, I believe we live in a world now where you don't build your website once and just leave it. I believe the world we live in now that you should be changing up your website, just like how you go to Walmart, you go to Publix and you saw something in aisle 10 that's no longer on aisle 10, it's in aisle one. And they're shifting things up based on the behavior of the customers. And that's kind of like the websites that you want to be able to, 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 to have in your arsenal. Build your website 
be intentional about shifting things up, but how do you do that if you don't understand the user behavior, right? And that's where, especially, particularly if you're in e-commerce or particularly if you're using you, maybe a SaaS product or any kind of a, a website that requires your visitors to be really, really um, um, heavy on in terms of u- u- utilization, right? So, so this is one thing that I'd certainly recommend uh, it does have a price tag, but I do think there's there's the free version as well. You can try it for free. Take a look at it, test it out. Um, it's worth it, guys. I think it's cheaper than an actual surveillance camera as well. So just, uh, you know, why not have a surveillance camera on your site to see what people are doing and, and why not prepare yourself to shift things up based on uh, based on those behavior, right? That's uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, so the, the other piece is the... Um, is the Google Analytics. And I, I talked about Google Analytics earlier. Um, I talked about Google Analytics earlier and, and I would love for, for, for you guys to, again, make a note. You need to go and install Google Analytics, get Google Analytics set up on your website. Google Analytics is an important part of your entire website ecosystem. It is it's measuring traffic. You need traffic to make things happen with your business. If you're selling products, if you're selling service, you have to drive traffic. You have to drive a certain amount of traffic to your uh, to your website in order for you to get a certain amount of clicks, in order for you to get a certain amount of purchases or appointment books. That funnel, as you visualize that funnel and you, you look at that funnel, you realize at the very top of the funnel is traffic. Like you've got to get a lot of traffic coming into your coming into your site, right? And you wanna be able to be, be able to use uh, the Google Analytics tool to see exactly what's the behavior, what's the, what's the traffic like. Google is, help, is gonna help you to make that analysis. So here, for example, I do have a site that popped up automatically on my Google Analytics, and this is telling me what's going on in my users. It's down or the sessions or your bounce rate. So it's, it's telling you things and, and it's good to know where you are at because now you can work on it. Your session times, right, uh, is telling you live visitors and you want to you want to ensure that you have this in place so you understand where things are. It's a beautiful um, display of analytics by Google. Traffic, it analyzes infinity. There's so many different things. Customers, you see here, it's telling us the traffic channel the 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 organic search or folks who are looking at it directly social media referrals is giving you that data you need to understand this because that's how you're going to then go to those traffic source beef up your marketing there right uh if you're not getting any traffic from one source you want to figure out why and you want to improve that as you go so this is this is amazing and it, it it's it's really incredible you get uh a lifetime of data. Once you install it, you can pull reports up month over month and assess and analyze exactly um, how things um, are when it comes to traffic that are being, um, you know, that, that are going to your site. There are so many other tools that are in Google Analytics and we don't have um, time to go over those other features rather, but your basic step, your most basic thing that you can do today as you as you as we depart, install Google Analytics on your website and get it set up. Ensure that Google is indexing your website because that, they're going to need that data to be able to provide you with the statistics of your visitors. Those things are super important. So I really hope that for the seventy percent of folks who don't do audits, who don't use these different kinds of tools. I'm really hoping that uh, you you have benefited from this conversation and at least one of those tools you can go spend some time on and see how things are. And you can talk to your your marketing folks, your web folks and say, hey, listen, uh, you know, we've got to take some measures and we got to do it now. We got to get these things up and running uh, if we're going to be successful. Right. Um, So I don't know how much more time do I have left uh, than to do the other one. so I got one minute and um, I, I can't spend too much time on mention, but mention is social media. Many of us are in, uh, in social media every day uh, and mention really allows you to get an analysis, analysis of what's happening in, uh, in social media, right? And so 
you you get to monitor what's going on in mention right any conversation that you're interested in 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 seeing mention actually shows you that you can listen you can listen to uh, uh to 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 social media posts and you can it, can it allows for you to be able to make sense of what's happening uncover trends in your conversation um and you can filter data from instagram twitter uh, um, and Facebook. And then of course you can basically connect with your audience and do publishing. So this is one of the other tool. Um, I don't have enough time to go in there, but please go to it, check it out, check the demo out, Let's do a free trial on it. Um, today we live in an experimental world. Every marketing department, every business owner must be in that modality or be able to switch to the modality of experiment. Why not, right? Why not experiment? Why not see how it works? Again, if it works, we amplify it. If it doesn't work, we modify it. And if you have that mentality, I promise you, we speak again a year from now or six months from now uh, with some of the things that we talked about here today, you're gonna be in a very different place and that place is not gonna be dark. Thank you very much. And I appreciate uh, the conversation today. Ricardo, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I can't tell you um, how much we appreciate your expertise, your guidance. Um, I learned a few tools from preparing this presentation with you. Uh, and uh, I know we moved through it really fast, guys. But the, the idea here um, is not that we can uh, teach you uh, this. Uh, the idea here is that we can inspire you uh, to now go and explore these tools on your own. And we're, we're going to be giving you this handout uh, as a thank you gift for coming today. You'll see that it includes all of these recommended tools with a brief description. And then we have a whole bunch of other tools that we didn't get a chance to do today uh, as part of our thank you gifts that we're going to be giving. And I just wanted to wrap up by saying that uh, we're going to be offering all of you an opportunity to apply for our scholarship program for small businesses, uh, specifically women-owned and minority-owned businesses. And we help businesses like yours in three ways. We have a seven-week course, 35 hours. Ricardo is one of the instructors of it with 10 hours of personalized coaching, uh, which is really about building the foundation of knowledge that you need in order to be a successful small business marketer. That's our core offering. Uh, we've been doing it for seven years um, and it's one of the most uh, important things I've done in my life. We have just launched a LinkedIn course for those B2B marketers or solopreneurs who are looking to expand their presence and thought leadership on LinkedIn. It's a five-week program, 17 hours with seven hours of coaching that starts in November. And then for a lot of you who are really busy uh, or you are um, limited in, in time and budget, we do offer consultation and coaching. Ricardo is available for one-on-one -on -one coaching with you, um, and that is also eligible uh, a part of the application process. Uh, again, as a benefit to uh, applying for the scholarship, you'll also get uh, a personalized one-on-one -on -one session with me. We'll talk about your marketing and we'll see if there's something that we can do to help you. Um, I wanna thank you guys again for coming today. Uh, next week at this time, we're gonna have a program on Instagram and specifically Tatiana McDaniel, BizHack Masterclass instructor is gonna talk about how to make your Instagram pop. Now, Tati used to be at some of the top agencies, Zimmerman, Republica, Young and Rubicam, and now she's the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer of a e-commerce company that is specifically for women called Happy V. And Tati is incredibly expert in how to present your brand in the most visually appealing way and how to do that on Instagram. And if you use her tips and tricks, you will have an Instagram feed that looks as good as any enterprise company, enterprise company in the country. It is not that hard. The only thing in between you and having a great looking Instagram is knowledge. And that's what we're going to help you bridge. We're going to give you the knowledge to be as good as the best enterprise Instagram uh, out there. Uh, Danilo, we beat our goal of 100 
participants. Um, and uh, we're going to beat it again next week, I'm convinced. Uh, Danilo, do you think we should do more of these master classes after we finish up with Instagram? Listen, I love this. It's been powerful. Thank you so much, Ricardo. These are things that we can use to level up immediately, like you said, start today. Thank you. All right. Well, our regards to the mayor's office for uh, helping make this possible. Um, and to many of our community members who loved our 60 BizHack Lives uh, and are back here for our partnership in this masterclass series. And Ricardo, thank you. Uh, I'm so blessed to have you a part of the BizHack family. And um, you. those thank of you who are interested, we got to end uh, on a musical note. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about your recording artist alter identity, Ricky Ricardo? <laughs> Well, you know, it's uh, it's uh, we can't always work, right? We have to have some fun, and um, uh, you know, it's one of the the fun side of me that I do. A lot of people don't think I do that, but I, I hang out in the studio. I love, uh, I love to kind of write music and um, uh, and produce. So I, I started doing some, and I, I did one for um, you know, for the Bizhack community, uh, which is really a, a solidarity and a tribute to folks uh, who have pursued and uh through through odds all odds uh just pursued their entrepreneurship dream um to build a career america needs small business the world needs small business and when you're an entrepreneur and when you fight every single day to keep your business open to keep things afloat to pay your team to do all these things um i think about that i'm like man you know hats off to these folks right because spending 20 years in entrepreneurship like like I've done, I've, I don't know what it is to work in corporate, but when I see others who have just been hit down by COVID and they get up the next day, still moving, right? Lost someone and they're still going, they lost everything and they pick up again. And we can only just say like, you know, to all of you guys, hats off to you because you do things that you really need to do to strive through and through. And, and that's the song, that's what the song is about. And you can find that song on the um, on the anywhere there's music uh, is Ricky uh, Anthony um, and and listen to it listen to the words uh, not the voices it's not really why I do it <laughs> but um, I hope that was something that could really help to continue to inspire you to take action right you have to take action because every action that you take leads you to another action at some point you you then get massive action to then have massive result and that's and that's the magic of entrepreneurship. Uh, take it from me, I've done 20 years in it and I'm still here, but uh, we continue every day with action. Uh, today I'm in Colombia, invited by the Colombian uh, pro-Colombia government the, down here to, to, to meet with talent and other folks who are taking action. They are taking massive action because they wanna connect into the global community. Um, we had to get be a part of it. We have an office out here in uh, Barranquilla and that's really helping. It, and it starts with action, just these little actions that have led to, if I never took action when I was first introduced to, uh, to, to this opportunity, I wouldn't have been here. The same thing with Dan. I think Dan is uh, an amazing um, uh, you know, entrepreneur, a visionary. Uh, he took action as well. Uh, he had to take action to be where he is. And the same thing for, uh, for Strive 305, the same thing for, 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 for the Miami community. So let's continue to do that and support each other. Really beautifully said. And Lilia, do you think, do we have a YouTube link we could include in the follow-up email with Ricky Ricardo's? All right, well, we'll include you guys. You won't even believe it. Uh, we, we did not believe it when we saw this guy uh, as a crooner, but it's now become our anthem and, and we'll share it with you via email. Thanks again to everybody. And we'll see you here. Uh, same bat channel, same bat time. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone.